Hey everyone, welcome to Quick Brick Games. So in 2008, developer TT Games decided to branch away from the Star Wars titles that they had become known for. During the summer, they launched Lego Indiana Jones The Original Adventures, another Lucasfilm property, but in the fall of that year, they delved into a brand new landscape, the world of DC Comics with Lego Batman the video game. For the first time, this game would not be adapting a film franchise into Lego form. Lego Batman would tell an entirely original story set in the Lego version of Gotham City. Now, although the story is original, this game clearly takes heavy inspiration from the late 80s and 90s Tim Burton era Batman films. This is super evident since the classic Danny Elfman music plays throughout the game, and I'd say the general design of Gotham City looks very Tim Burton as well. But was TT Games able to pull off a Lego game based in the superhero DC universe? Let's find out as we do a complete analysis and retrospective of Lego Batman the video game. When you boot up the game, you're greeted with an iconic shot of Batman and Robin on top of a building watching over Gotham, with the 1989 Danny Elfman theme playing, of course. Upon starting a new game, you'll see a pre-rendered cutscene of all of Batman's greatest villains escaping Arkham Asylum and wrecking havoc on the city but Batman and Robin aren't far behind. After all the cutscenes, you see the first loading screen for the first level, you can bank on Batman. Uh, the loading screens in this game are kind of unique in that they give a little description of what's going on in the story, and you see the villain that the level is focusing on. First up is Clayface. Personally, I think this is a perfect first level. It's pretty much just classic Batman and Robin fighting crime on the streets of Gotham while teaching you all the new gameplay mechanics. This game adds some new features to the hand-to-hand -hand combat. As you beat up multiple enemies, you'll notice a multiplier that increases if you keep taking on multiple enemies within a short time frame. This acts as a stud multiplier, so after you beat up a bunch of thugs, you can try to run around into some nearby studs for a second or two for a nice multiplier boost. There's also the new grab mechanic where you can pick up thugs, carry them around if you'd like, and then knock them out. If you hold on to the attack button, an aiming reticle will appear on screen. You can use this to aim and throw batarangs anywhere that's viewable across your screen. You can even drag the reticle across multiple items and the batarang will fly in a line that hits all of them. I think this is a really cool feature that allows you to use Batman's most iconic weapon, the batarang. And speaking of Batman's gadgets, uh, remember the grapple hook spots from the LEGO Star Wars games? Those return here, except now they are used to grapple up with Batman or Robin's grapnel gun. You have a little more control over them now too. You can go up or down or even stop while grappling up. I don't find this to be particularly useful since you can't really do much while you're just hanging there, but hey, it is a change nonetheless. And continuing on traversal, there's these new zip lines that Batman and Robin can crawl or walk across to reach new areas. Throughout the game, you may come across thugs holding a hostage. There's actually 25 hostages to rescue throughout the entire game, and if you do this, you'll unlock the villain Hush as a playable character. A fast guide and one short video is available on my channel if you'd like to try to get all 25. Anyways, a major new feature of this game is the suit mechanic. As you play through the game, you'll come across these suit swapper signals that contain different suits for Batman or Robin. First up is the Demolition Suit. The Demolition Suit grants Batman the ability to plant bombs, which can then be detonated to destroy silver Lego objects. Later on in the level, you'll discover Robin's Technology Suit. The Technology Suit allows Robin to interact with computer terminals, which solve different puzzles throughout the game. Eventually, you'll reach the bank that Clayface is robbing. Clayface becomes this game's first boss, where you use Batman's Demolition Suit bombs, as well as Batarangs, to defeat him. And that wraps up the first level. As always with TT Games' LEGO games, you're met with a results screen which recaps everything you collected in that level. I like the design of the results screen in this one. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a desk at the GCPD with different images of Batman and the villains on it. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Anyway though, many kits return and they've received a nice black and yellow Batman redesign. There's 10 to find in each level just like before. There's also one red power brick to find in each level which will grant you upgrades to Batman's suits. More on that later. Upon completing a level in story mode, free play mode will unlock so that you can jump back into a level with any of your unlocked characters and grab those collectibles. And another shameless plug here, but if you need help finding any of the mini kits or red bricks in this game, I have ultra fast guides for every level in this game available neatly in a playlist here on the channel. A link for that is in the description. But okay, let's go ahead and move on. So the second level is called an icy reception. 
As you can probably tell by the name, we're going to be dealing with Mr. Freeze. This level takes place at an ice cream factory and you begin just outside the building. This is where we discover Robin's magnet suit. This suit allows Robin to walk along magnetic surfaces that look like this. But Robin isn't the only one to get a new suit. Shortly after we get inside the ice cream factory, we unlock Batman's glide suit. As the name suggests, Batman can now glide across short gaps. And then once we get to the end of the level, we have our boss fight with Mr. Freeze himself. He's surprisingly pretty tough. His attacks are brutal and he can instantly turn you into a block of ice with his freeze gun. Be sure to switch characters when that happens. But once you take him down, Riddler makes a brief appearance to give us a clue to the next level location. So this leads us into the first vehicle level of the game, Two-Face Chase. In this one, we get to control the Batmobile or Robin's Batbike as we chase down Two-Face's armored truck on the streets of Gotham. The Batmobile controls pretty decent. Uh, you can fire regular bullets and launch a tow cable from the back. And this level is divided into three main sections, which all revolve around shooting Riddler's trucks, grappling them with Batman's tow cable, and then delivering them into a police helicopter to be taken away. And then in the final section of the level, there's a boss fight with Two-Face's armored truck, where we do the exact same thing, except you just do it three times in a row on Two-Face. Once he's defeated, that ends the level. Batman and Robin head back to the Batcave, and Batman analyzes a leaf using the Batcomputer. He determines Riddler's next location is the Botanical Gardens, which of course means Poison Ivy is going to be involved within the next level, which is called a Poisonous Appointment. In the opening section, we use a bulldozer to reveal Batman's sonic suit. Uh, this grants the ability to shatter glass Lego objects with the high-pitched sonic gun. Inside the gardens, Robin finds the Attract suit. This is kind of an interesting one. Uh, we use the Attract suit to suck up red, green, and yellow Lego pieces. The number of pieces you've collected is displayed on his back in the little tank. Once you've collected enough pieces, usually 25, you can deposit them at an Attracto machine nearby. These machines usually provide some way to progress the level. In this case, getting rid of this giant plant in our way. But that's not all of the suits in this level. Batman also discovers the heat protection suit, allowing Batman to touch and interact with red hot Lego objects. This is definitely the least used suit in the entire game. I think this is actually the only time it's ever used in the main story. The rest is just used for collecting mini kits and whatnot in free play mode. The boss fight with Poison Ivy involves taking down three of her giant plants while she herself and her green goons fight you as well. Poison Ivy is ultimately defeated, but the Riddler escapes to rob the Gotham Bank. So this leads us into the final level, the face-off. This level begins on a bridge where we fight some goons and do some puzzle solving to reach Gotham Bank's island. We use Robin's magnet suit to climb up a wall and eventually reach an elevator to get our heroes inside the bank. None other than Two-Face is waiting for us inside. For some reason, the Gotham Gold Reserve building has tanks of green acid just sitting around, which Two-Face uses to flood the room. We have to use Batman's glide suit and Robin's attract suit to move across the acid while fighting Two-Face at the same time. Later on, there's this room where you do some platforming to dodge these lasers. I always thought this was kind of a cool looking uh, room in the game. Uh, but anyways, we get inside the vault where a lengthy fight against Two-Face and the Riddler occurs. So you gotta take down all their hearts of health, beat them up, and send all the villains so far that we've encountered back to Arkham Asylum, ending episode one, The Riddler's Revenge. Okay, so once you've completed the first episode, you'll arrive at the Batcave hub world. I must say, what a perfect area to base this game's hub. To the left of where you spawn, you'll find the Bat Computer. This works as this game's store where you can spin your hard-earned studs. The store is mostly the same as the prior games. The data section is a new one, which gives neat little fun facts about Batman and his villains. Uh, for example, this one talks about Batman's bat suit and how it's made of Kevlar. You of course can buy characters, extras, enter cheat codes, rewatch cutscenes, all of that good stuff here. There is the new suit upgrades section, which I talked about earlier. Suit upgrades are unlocked by collecting red bricks, and these upgrade Batman and Robin's different suits with new abilities. So, pretty cool. And speaking of the suits, if we walk away from the Bat Computer, we have suit swapper signals for both Batman and Robin found here in the Batcave. You can pull on these levers to switch to any of the suits you've unlocked and use them throughout the Batcave if you'd like. Walking to the left, we can take an elevator down to the Hero Mission Room. Here you can see Batman's famous vehicles, the Batmobile on the left, the Batboat down the middle, and the Batwing on the right. Now of course, the LEGO games before this one divided the levels by the movie that they were based on. 
Of course, this game isn't based off of any films, but you can sort of think of each vehicle as representing a different movie or episode in the story. Each episode has a main villain, which are the Riddler, the Penguin, and the Joker, and each chapter has five levels to complete. We've already completed the first episode, the Riddler's Revenge, which corresponds to the Batmobile. The Batboat holds the second episode, Power Crazed Penguin, and the Batwing has the third episode, the Joker's Return levels. If you continue walking to the right, there's another elevator which leads into Wayne Manor. This is where you can view all your completed mini kits. I love how to get back to the Batcave, the door to the elevator is behind a bookshelf, just like the classic Adam West TV show, and really a lot of Batman media to be honest. So I think that covers most of the Batcave, so I think now would be a good time to jump into the Batboat and begin the first level of Episode 2, which is called There She Goes Again. So Episode 2 is all about the Penguin, and this first level focuses on Catwoman. This one starts off near some of the docks, but primarily takes place on Gotham City rooftops. In the middle of the level, you'll have an encounter with Catwoman. She has four hearts of health, and she's very simple to take down. You then get to fight her again at the end of the level where she has 10 hearts of health. This fight goes on for quite a bit longer than the first one. Uh, for one, because you obviously have to hit her 10 times. But two, every hit or two, Catwoman will keep evading you until you take out all of Penguin's henchmen. She also likes to jump between all these different rooftops that have different elevation levels, which can take some time going up and down ladders. Once she's defeated, you'll have this cutscene of Batman and Catwoman making out, which is a little weird to see in a Lego game. But alright, next up we have Batboat Battle. As the name suggests, we get to control the Batboat for the first time. The controls are very similar to the Batmobile. Like the Batmobile, the Batboat does have a tow cable which you can use to drag bombs around to blow up silver Lego objects. About halfway through the level, you'll need to switch to Robin's Watercraft since he has the unique ability to fire torpedoes which can destroy red, yellow, and green Lego objects. Eventually, you'll reach the boss battle against Penguin's submarine. The Batboat's tow cable comes in handy in dragging bombs to blow up his sub. After doing that several times, you can hit him with regular bullets, and the submarine will be history. I haven't talked about the cutscenes too much, but uh, the cutscenes in this game are just as good as the other Lego games. For example, in this one, Robin's head just gets sliced off by a sewer cover. Pretty gruesome, but uh, don't worry, he's just fine. So this leads us to the sewers where we need to handle Killer Croc in the level Under the City. This level introduces us to the final new suit of the game, Robin's Water Suit. This allows Robin to walk underwater and solve different puzzles and obstacles that the game throws at you. In this case, we have to walk under the water to get over to this pressure switch, which will drain the water, allowing Batman to use his demolition suit to blow up a silver Lego object. Eventually, we'll exit the sewers and end up in what looks like a jail cell where the battle with Killer Croc takes place. Killer Croc has a whopping 14 hearts of health. He's going to distance himself from you by standing in some green acid while also throwing some Lego objects at you. Just dodge them and then he'll leave the acid, leaving him open for attack. Rinse and repeat, and that's it for Killer Croc. In the cutscene, Batman finds some sort of zoo brochure which leads us to the next level, Zoo's Company. This level is fairly puzzle based. You'll have to use Batman and Robin's different suit abilities to build a bulldozer, giving you an entrance into the zoo. There's then another puzzle involving Robin's technology suit and both Batman's Sonic and Glide suits to build a bridge leading to the other side of the zoo. The next section is this cool kind of jungle slash pond area with these bouncing uh, lily pads uh, that you can uh, kind of traverse across. Definitely not your typical Batman environment. Uh, you'll drop down into this boat where you'll discover Man-Bat's secret lair. Man-Bat has a pretty cool boss fight where you're going to need to dodge his bombs as he flies overhead. Uh, meanwhile, you need to build a gramophone which causes loud noises bringing Man-Bat to the ground. Keep doing this until you've taken out all nine of Man-Bat's hearts. By the way, why does Man-Bat get nine hearts of health but not Catwoman? It would totally make much more sense for Catwoman, but anyways, it turns out that the Penguin himself also has a lair in the Gotham Zoo, meaning the next level is appropriately titled Penguin's Lair. I have to mention that the opening cutscene of this level has one of the best shots of the entire game, Batman and Robin just jumping into action towards the camera. Gotta love it. But overall, this level is pretty short. There's this opening section where you need to do some puzzle solving to get across a couple of different bodies of water. Some of the Penguin's goons will be attacking you as well, but after that, you're already at the boss fight arena. This fight involves both Catwoman and Penguin. 
Uh, for most of the fight, they're going to stand up on this ledge in front of Penguin's machine, which I guess is supposed to control robot penguins throughout the city or something. Who knows Penguin's plan there, but uh, I do like how there is this neat mechanic where you need to rotate this Lego object wall to the correct angle in order to reflect Penguin's bombs towards the silver Lego objects around the room. Definitely a unique mechanic there. And then throughout the fight, Penguin and Catwoman will jump down to fight you, but Penguin is the one who actually matters since you need to take down all 10 of his hearts to end the boss fight. He likes to glide around with his umbrella every now and then too, so make sure to throw batterings at him to get him to come down. Once he's defeated, there's a cutscene of Penguin and all of his buddies chilling behind the bars of Arkham Asylum. So we have yet another supervillain defeated. So now that we've finished off episode 2, we'll be teleported back to the Batcave. Uh, so if we head back to the hero mission room, uh, we can jump into the Batwing on the right to start episode 3 of the story, which is the final episode called The Joker's Return. So now that Penguin and the Riddler are defeated, all that's left is Joker and his posse. In this first level, we head to Ace Chemicals, aka Joker's home turf, where the Mad Hatter awaits. This one begins outside where you need to use Robin's attract suit on two different occasions. After you deposit his red, yellow, and green Lego pieces into the nearby Attracto machine, you'll get this vacuum-like vehicle which allows you to suck up all the green acid in the area. Later on, you fill up a second Attracto machine, giving you a grenade launcher, which allows you to bring the vacuum vehicle inside the building. The rest of the level takes place inside Ace Chemicals as you use a bulldozer to kind of get through many of this level's obstacles. At the end of the level, we have a boss fight against the Mad Hatter. You need to use Batman and Robin's different abilities to get Mad Hatter to fall into the acid. Watch out when you fight him though, because he can use his mind control abilities, forcing you to switch to the other character. Repeat this a couple times and he'll be defeated. During the cutscene, Joker's helicopter can be seen heading into Gotham's amusement park, leading us into the next level. So the Joker and Harley Quinn have captured Commissioner Gordon at the amusement mile. Obviously, it's up to Batman and Robin to rescue him. This one is called Little Fun at the Big Top. This is a pretty fun level as you'll be fighting your way through the park. There will be plenty of Joker clown henchmen coming down from balloons to slow your progress. Batman's sonic suit is used in this one to destroy some glass Lego object doors, as well as Robin's magnet and attract suits. There is a boss fight with Joker's girlfriend, Harley Quinn. She is armed with a gun and will backflip away when you try to attack. The key to defeating her is to continue chasing her down, forcing her to backflip over and over again until she gets tired, leaving her open to attack. Once she's taken care of, Batman rescues Commissioner Gordon, but of course, the Joker escapes in his helicopter. This brings us to the next level, Flight of the Bat, where we get to fly the Batwing and Batcopter because now Scarecrow is threatening the city with his fear gas, as he usually does. Scarecrow has his own biplane that he flies around with in this game. As with other vehicle levels, there's these purple torpedo dispensers that the Batwing can use to destroy objects with a purple target, which get in our way, like these Joker missile launchers. Meanwhile, the Batcopter comes in handy because it has a tow cable, allowing us to tow these hover mines which can destroy silver Lego objects. After the first area, there's this second sort of filler area, then you can reach the final section where we have our boss fight against Scarecrow's biplane. He surprisingly only has three hearts of health, what you need to do to defeat him is to grapple his biplane with the Batcopter's tow cable, slowing him down. This will leave him open for a purple torpedo attack from the Batwing. Once you do this three different times, Scarecrow and the Joker will crash into each other, leaving them to float to the ground on their little balloons below. The next level is called In the Dark Night. Joker has met back up with Harley Quinn and now Killer Moth is causing absolute chaos in Gotham. I always enjoy this level as it takes place on the streets of Gotham, sort of similar to the opening level of the game. A cool section of this level is towards the middle, you'll reach this nightclub building. After a bit of puzzle solving, you'll reach the second floor where you can set up a disco party with this iconic music and robot. The floor puzzle in this room is an exact copy of the puzzle that was found in the original LEGO Star Wars games, and I believe it appeared in LEGO Indiana Jones as well. So. So kind of a cool callback to those games. You can use Robin's technology suit to control the robot, breaking the weak Lego object wall in the background. Back outside, we maneuver our way around some acid and fire obstacles and eventually reach the building where Killer Moth awaits. Killer Moth is basically a human bug, so of course he's attracted to light. We can use Batman and Robin's abilities to power up this giant light bulb, making Killer Moth open to attack. Keep doing this until you take out all six of his hearts and that'll take care of him. 
I love the cutscene at the end where Robin just pulls out some bug spray on him. Pretty good joke there. This leads us to Batman and Robin's final confrontation with Joker and Harley Quinn in the level to the top of the tower. Joker and Harley have taken over a church cathedral where they have bombs planted. This level begins outside of the cathedral where there's a brief Harley Quinn boss fight. You need to use some water turrets to attack her until all three of her hearts are depleted. Once you get inside the church, there's some henchmen you gotta fight and some unique platforming as you slowly climb up the tower. Once you get to the top, we have our final showdown with the Joker and Harley Quinn. Both of them will be hiding in the church's bells, so we need to bang on both bells to kind of draw them out. After that, Joker will call in his helicopter, which completely blows up the side of the building. Luckily, we can use some more of these water turrets to take down all five hearts of the Joker's helicopter. Uh, now that the helicopter is gone, though, we can finally fight Joker. He has a whopping 11 hearts of health, no idea why they couldn't give him 10, but uh, TT Games went with 11. <laughs> but anyways, you can basically button mash the attack button on him. Occasionally he will use his electric handshake, requiring you to switch characters to attack him. Now in the ending cutscene, Batman will look as if he's been defeated, but he's able to use the bats hanging on the ceiling to disorient Joker and Harley, defeating them, at least for now anyways. After the results screen, the game ending cutscene has this iconic shot of the Batwing against the moon, and it shows Batman and Robin watching diligently over the city now that all the supervillains are back behind bars. So that's it for Lego Batman the video game. Or is it? So after the credits roll, as usual, you'll be back in the Batcave. Now earlier, you may have noticed this lever. Pulling it will transport you to Arkham Asylum, the second hub world of this game. Yes, we have two hubs in Lego Batman the video game. In Arkham Asylum, we get to play as the Riddler and Clayface. There's loads of jail cells and criminals walking around. If we head towards the right, we'll reach the Experiment Room. This is where you can create your own character, just like in the prior LEGO games, so they didn't forget about that here in LEGO Batman. You can create unique characters using any of the parts of characters that you've unlocked so far. And speaking of unlocking characters, the essential computer in Arkham Asylum allows you to hack into Batman's Bat computer, where you can purchase characters, extras, and everything else just like you can from the Batcave. I always like that little hacking explanation as to how the villains can use the game's store. But anyways, there's also the villain trophy room in Arkham Asylum, where you can view completed minikit builds for any collected minikits in the villain levels. The 15 levels that we played as Batman and Robin, in my opinion, were definitely enough for a full-fledged LEGO Batman experience, but TT Games went above and beyond in this game and added 15 more levels, but this time you're playing the same story, the same three episodes, but from the villain's perspective. If you walk towards the left, you'll arrive at the villain mission room. There's three vehicles, Two-Face's armored truck, representing episode one, The Riddler's Revenge, Penguin submarine, representing episode two, Power Grazed Penguin, and the Joker's helicopter, which represents episode three, The Joker's Return. So how about we jump into Two-Face's armored truck and start checking out these villain levels. The Riddler Makes a Withdrawal is the first level on the villain side of things. Something cool about these villain levels is how the loading screen text is the main villain of the episode, in this case the Riddler, speaking to that specific level's villain, so in this case it's Clayface. Another cool thing about the villain side is how you're pretty much playing as a new character in every level. With the hero levels you're just Batman and Robin the whole way through, which is fun and all, they have their unique suit abilities and everything, but having a fresh character each time is awesome. So our job in this one is to rob a bank to get a key, and we get to play as the Riddler and Clayface. These levels are essentially prequels to the hero versions of these levels. So we start out in a parking garage, and we slowly make our way to the bank where Clayface is ultimately defeated by Batman and Robin. The Riddler has the ability to mind control weak-minded NPCs throughout the levels, Typically the NPC will be in an unreachable area, so you need to mind control them to pull a lever, stand on a switch, stuff like that. Clayface, on the other hand, is a super strength character, which is a new ability introduced in this LEGO game. Super strength characters can pull on orange handles to throw or move objects out of the way, like this truck. Clayface is also a high jumping character, which is kind of odd. The super strength, I think, makes sense for his character, but jumping high? No idea where that came from. Uh, but anyways, once you complete the level, Clayface hands the key to Riddler, but Clayface gets distracted by all the money, allowing Riddler to escape and leaving Clayface to be stopped by Batman and Robin. The next thing the Riddler needs for his plan is a freeze ray, so obviously we need to play as Mr. Freeze in the next level on the rocks. The goal is to steal a freeze ray from an ice cream factory because 
they totally have experimental freeze guns laying around. As you'd expect, Mr. Freeze has the ability to freeze enemies with his freeze gun. His mechanical suit gives him the super strength ability as well, so objects with orange handles won't be a problem. This level has quite a bit of puzzle solving too. I like this part towards the middle of the level where you need to use Mr. Freeze's freeze gun to freeze up this red ice cream, I guess that's what that is, uh, to get across this gap. Uh, the last area is the same area where we had the boss fight with Mr. Freeze in the hero version of the level. Anyways, we get the freeze ray and Mr. Freeze stays behind as he unfreezes these hooded henchwomen. Seriously, who are these people and why were they just frozen in an ice cream factory? I have no idea. But alright, let's move on to the next level which is called Green Fingers, where Riddler teams up with Poison Ivy to rob the botanical gardens of some plants which Riddler needs for his plan. I like the opening cutscene here where they're trying to silently sneak past Commissioner Gordon, but Riddler steps on a flower causing Poison Ivy to scream at him in rage, completely blowing their cover. So Poison Ivy has the ability to walk through acid or green gases, which comes in handy. She can also cause plants to grow in specific situations like this one. Lastly, she is a high jumper too, so she's probably one of the best characters in the game to be honest. The final area of this level can be a little annoying due to the constant police officer enemies coming down as you're trying to puzzle solve, but after you battle your way through, the Riddler gets the plant seeds he needs, and Ivy stays behind to get stopped by Batman and Robin later. Level number 4 is pretty interesting because it's pretty much 100% original content in terms of level design. There isn't really a hero equivalent for this one because you see, for whatever reason, the villain version of Episode 1 The Riddler's Revenge does not have a vehicle level. It's the only episode that doesn't, so instead we get this original content in the level which is called an enterprising theft. The Riddler still needs a laser gun, so he teams up with Two-Face to rob Wayne Enterprise's labs. As a character, Two-Face is basically a worse version of Poison Ivy since Two-Face can only walk through acid, but he can't, you know, interact with plants or high jump like Poison Ivy can. He does have a gun for ranged attacks, so there is that. But speaking of acid, this level has this section where the labs get flooded with it, so it's pretty cool that characters like Two-Face can not only walk in it, but swim in it as well. But after getting through all of Bruce Wayne's security, the last area has you build a robot to destroy the shield generator around the laser gun. Once that's down, Two-Face grabs it, giving the Riddler everything he needs for his master plan of robbing Gotham City's gold. Alright, so this brings us to the final Riddler level called Breaking Blocks. Once again, we get to play as Two-Face and the Riddler as they execute the master plan. The opening area has us building some sort of mind control machine that Riddler sits in to control a nearby helicopter. We can then use this helicopter to destroy the Silver Lego object front door, giving us an entrance into the Gold Reserves building. Throughout this level, there will be a bunch of SWAT trooper enemies trying to slow your progress. There's a lot of laser traps, so it's sort of similar to Wayne Enterprise's security in the previous level. This one also likes to throw in random areas that have acid. It really makes no sense to have, you know, in a Gotham Gold Reserves building. They needed to give Two-Face something to do, I guess. Eventually, you'll reach the vault where we build another robot to break into it. So, Riddler's plan is a success. Or is it? I guess the story here is that once they break in, they don't actually steal any of the gold. Instead, they just kind of sit inside the vault and wait for Batman and Robin to stop them. Yeah, supervillains just aren't the brightest, but that wraps up the villain side of Episode 1, The Riddler's Revenge. Back at Arkham Asylum, we can jump into the Penguin submarine to begin the supervillain side of Episode 2, Power Crazed Penguin. Up first is a level called Rock in the Docks. So in the story here, the Penguin has recruited Catwoman, Killer Croc, Bane, and Man Bat to help him in his plan to build some sort of a satellite device which will control robot penguins across the city. It's a very good plan, I know. But in this first level, we get to play as Bane and the Penguin at the docks. As you'd expect, Bane is a super strength character who can pull orange handles. He can also walk through toxic acid or gas. And my favorite part of this level is this cool section that really shows off Bane's strength. There's this large boat with an orange handle on the side, and Bane just pulls the entire thing towards the camera. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything quite like that in a LEGO game before where you're kind of interacting with an object that large. But let's talk about Penguin. So Penguin can glide with his umbrella, similar to Batman's glide suit. He can also destroy silver LEGO objects with his explosive penguins, which come in handy on multiple occasions. In the end, Penguin is able to secure the satellite dish that he needed, while Bane gets captured by the police. I like the cutscene which reveals that Bane's body is so heavy that a LEGO police car can barely pull his body along. 
But okay, moving on, the next level has Penguin trying to steal a diamond from a museum. When diamonds are involved, we know Catwoman's going to be involved too. So this level is called Stealing the Show. Catwoman is a very agile character, so she has the high jump ability. She can also use these heart doors where she seduces guards into letting her past certain gates. Midway through, this level has a mini boss fight against a police helicopter. Conveniently, there's four fans on the rooftop which you can use to blow the helicopter's explosives right back at it. Later on, when you get inside the museum, you do get to control this dinosaur skeleton, which is pretty fun. And then the last section has you using Penguin's explosive penguins to destroy the security protecting the diamond. Overall, I think this is a pretty unique and varied level and probably one of the better ones in the game in my opinion. Unfortunately for Penguin, Catwoman escapes with the diamond with Batman not far behind. Now back on the docks, Penguin meets up with Killer Croc who's on his swamp rider jet ski. Harboring a Grudge is the name of this next level and it's the first vehicle level within the villain story. It's all about Penguin and Killer Croc escaping from the police. Penguin's submarine has the ability to pick up purple torpedoes which can destroy silver Lego objects like this rocket launcher turret. It can also go underwater allowing you to pass under gates and other obstacles. Killer Croc's Swamp Rider can travel through acid because for some reason Gotham City just has random acid in its water supply I guess. The level ends with a boss fight against the police watercraft. This thing has four hearts of health. You'll need to use both Penguin and Killer Croc's abilities to defeat it. Once the police are taken care of, Penguin's next goal is to rescue Catwoman from jail, since you know Batman defeated her during the hero story mission, and Catwoman has that diamond which Penguin never got. The fourth Penguin level is called a Daring Rescue. Penguin and Killer Croc stick together to save Catwoman by coming through the sewers. Killer Croc plays pretty much exactly like Bane in that he can walk in acid and has super strength. However, he is a bit better than Bane since he also has the ability to walk underwater, much like Robin when he's wearing his water suit. I like Killer Croc as a playable character in this one, but I do kind of wish Man Bat was playable in the main story here. His character just kind of gets pushed aside in the story here, and he's only playable in free play mode. But anyway, this level is pretty fun. There's a section in the middle where you build a Lego alligator, or maybe it's a crocodile, and you just absolutely ply your way through the sewers. You slowly move above ground into the jail where Catwoman is being held, then rescue her. Penguin gets his diamond and now he has everything he needs for his machine. Penguin teams up with Catwoman once again in the final episode 2 level which is called Arctic World. Penguin decides to set up his machine in this arctic section of the Gotham Zoo. The opening section of this level takes place outside where you need to construct a bulldozer to destroy some nearby ice obstacles. Once inside, there's this dreaded slide sequence. It's only dreaded because TT Games decided to place a mini kit on this slide, which is very easily missable, requiring you to replay the entire level to make another attempt. But anyway, moving past that, the slide leads to the area with the machine, the same area where we had the boss fight against Penguin on the hero storyline. We have to do a bit of puzzle solving to get Penguin's machine up and running, but once you do, the level ends and Penguin's plan is complete. But it's not going to last too long as Batman and Robin are not far behind. So that covers Episode 2 Power Craze Penguin's villain side. The only story we have left in the villain side of things is Episode 3 The Joker's Revenge. So let's hop in Joker's helicopter and finish this. The first level here is called a surprise for the commissioner. So Joker's grand plan is to unleash his green laughing gas all across Gotham City. Uh, not the most original story there, but uh, I'll take it. In this first level we play as the Joker and Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn has the high jumping ability. She has a pistol as well, which I think is kind of unique. I don't see Harley Quinn with a pistol too often in different Batman media. The Joker has the ability to walk through acid or any sort of gas toxin. He also has an electric handshake which is used to power up special generators throughout the game and it can be used in combat too. This first level is based in the Amusement Mile theme park and opens up with a cool co-op puzzle where one character is on a top path and another character is on the bottom path. You switch back and forth in single player but I imagine this section is pretty fun when working together in two player co-op. Later on there's this unique section where you do a bit of platforming to get across the roller coaster tracks which is in the background. The final section of this level has a boss fight against Commissioner Gordon, who has 9 hearts of health. There's a crane in this boss arena which you can use to pick up explosive teddy bears and drop them on the police vehicles that are assisting Gordon. In the end, Gordon gets captured which of course leads into the hero version of this level where Batman needs to rescue him. But anyway, Joker escapes in his helicopter while teaming up with Scarecrow who flies his biplane in the level appropriately titled Biplane Blast. This is the second and last vehicle level in the villain storyline. 
The Joker's helicopter has a tow cable which is used to drag around hover mines which can destroy these silver Lego objects. Scarecrow's biplane, however, can pick up special green torpedoes which are used to destroy various things like these rocket launcher turrets. He's also able to travel through green gases on the rare occasion that those show up in free play mode. The level ends with a boss fight against a police battle helicopter. You can defeat it by getting two nearby rocket launcher turrets to shoot at it. This requires you to drag a couple hover mines over to the turrets. They'll both fire at the police helicopter, taking out two of its six hearts. And then the last four hearts can simply be taken out by spamming your standard bullets at it. Now despite taking out the police helicopter, Joker and Scarecrow ultimately crash due to Batman showing up during the hero side of the story. They end up crashing inside a museum, leading to the next level, the Joker's Masterpiece. Here we get to play as Scarecrow on foot. Scarecrow is similar to the Riddler in that he can use these question mark doors, where he uses his fear gas to manipulate guards to open doors for you. This is probably one of my favorite levels since you can cause absolute chaos at this museum. I also think this one has a good mix of both puzzle and combat. For example, there's a puzzle midway through where there's some green gas. Joker can walk through it just fine, but you need to find a way to air out the gas to get Scarecrow through. A similar situation happens towards the end of the level where there's a bunch of green acid, and you need to find a way to bring out a bridge for Scarecrow. Eventually though, Scarecrow gets captured, but Joker manages to escape using his laughing gas on a police officer. Next up is the lure of the night. The Joker joins up with Killer Moth and they both terrorize the streets of Gotham. Killer Moth has wings, but unfortunately he can't fly in this game. He only has the ability to glide, just like Batman's glide suit or Penguin's umbrella. This level is pretty chaotic as well. After you blow up this concrete wall, there's probably like 10 to 15 characters on screen between, you know, Joker's henchmen and all the police officers. This is probably one of the most open levels too. There's a section where you progress down a street, then enter a large open park with a playground and everything. Then the chaos heats up again at the end of the level as you enter a giant Joker robot and take down truckfuls of SWAT troopers. One of the trucks holds Harley Quinn, so Joker is able to rescue her, but Killer Moth gets too distracted by the Batwing's spotlight. So alright, this leads us to the final level of the entire game, Dying of Laughter. With the Joker and Harley Quinn reunited, they head to a church cathedral to execute their plan to flood the city with laughing gas. Unlike the hero version, the villain side of this level starts off inside the church, not outside. Of course, there are police officers everywhere in their last ditch effort to stop the Joker. After you get past the first section in the bottom floor, the rest of the level plays very similar to the hero side, where you're doing some platforming to slowly ascend the church tower. Uh, the level is kind of a very similar landscape as well. At the top, the goal is to simply ring both bells on each side of the room, and the level ends shortly after that. No climactic final boss fight or anything, as the Joker takes control of the cathedral. But we know Batman and Robin will be triumphant in the end. So alright, that is all 30 levels of LEGO Batman the video game. There is a ton of content in this game, and throwing an entire villain storyline was definitely TT Games going above and beyond. There is, however, a little bit of content that I still want to talk about. If you're able to fill the stud bar and reach true villain status in all the villain levels, you can head to the villain trophy room in Arkham Asylum, climb the ladder in the back, and discover a secret bonus level simply called Arkham Asylum. Now if you've played the LEGO games before this one, and why wouldn't you, you'll be familiar with the 1 million stud bonus levels like LEGO City or New Town from LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. They return this time, and although I don't care for these levels too much, I think they did improve them here. Arkham Asylum isn't just one area, but multiple areas that you need to explore to see how fast you can collect 1 million studs. So they definitely made things a bit less linear this time around. But that's not all the bonus content. If you head back to the Batcave and collected enough studs to reach true hero status in all 15 of the hero levels, you can take the elevator upstairs to Wayne Manor's hero trophy room. In the back left corner, a new bonus level titled Wayne Manor will be available. This is yet another 1 million stud bonus level. The beginning section takes place outside Wayne Manor. Surprisingly, this level has sort of a cartoony art style. At least it looks that way to me if you look closely at the textures of like the Wayne Manor building. There's another section where you go inside a computer, so there's a lot to this one as well. So those are the two bonus levels in this game. Back in the Batcave, there is one more little thing I'd like to mention here as we wrap things up. Both Nightwing and Batgirl are playable characters in this game, purchasable from the Batcomputer. They are the only two characters besides Batman and Robin to be able to use the suit swapper signals. So Batgirl can switch to any of Batman's suits and Nightwing can switch to any of Robin's suits. 
Batgirl and Nightwing don't appear in the story at all, but it is cool that they were included here and have all of Batman and Robin's abilities. And then if you manage to get 100% completion in this game, you can buy the Raish Al Ghul character from the Bat Computer for half a million studs. He's the only character with the health regeneration ability, so his hearts will come back after taking damage. But with all that, this pretty much covers all the content in the game. I would consider LEGO Batman the video game to be one of the greatest LEGO games of all time. It was very refreshing to see TT Games take on Batman in a LEGO game with a completely original story, while moving away from exclusively doing Lucasfilm properties. The Batman and Robin dynamic is simply perfect for the co-op LEGO gameplay. I also like how they expanded upon the combat with the grab move and the ability to aim and throw batarangs all across the screen. I love how the entire story can be played from both the hero and villain's perspective. It's neat seeing how the villains got to the point where they were in the hero levels, and using the villains different abilities keeps the gameplay from going stale. Lego Batman the video game is a joy to play and I highly recommend that you do. So right guys, that's going to wrap up my retrospective and analysis of 2008's Lego Batman the video game. Let me know what you think about this game, comment on any of the topics I've discussed throughout this video, and be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and let me know why. And subscribe for more content like this. If you haven't seen them, I have done retrospectives of the TT Games LEGO games before this one, so definitely check those out on the channel as well. So I'll see you guys next time here on Quick Break Games.